I'm Dan Johnson talking with Rand Vollmer about the Pipistrelle sinus. Now that's how you say this. It's very uh, artistically written here, but it's like sinus, but that's not how we say it. So it's sinus is the way it's pronounced. And this is a motor glider. This is a motor glider. Tell me a little, give me some of the facts about the construction of it and talk to me a little bit about the wings. All right, this is this was our first popular model. We actually started, I say Pipistrelle actually started with a, a uh, tricycle aircraft. But in the late 80s, they developed the Sinus or the Sinus, and they did it, and they named it after the sine wave, which the engineers ah, typically used. I, you know, they I had, never heard where that name they, came they from, had so thank no, you. They had no clue as to the fact that it might have a negative connotation, <laughs> but they had sold so many by the time they got into the U.S. English market that uh, they decided it was too late to change it, and the, the second aircraft they developed right from this one with a little shorter wing was the Virus. <laughs> and in fact, they, they, they have some labels on some of the Pipistrel virus or virus is the way they pronounce it uh, they say infected by pipistrel on, <laughs> on the placard on the outside of the aircraft so you might as well make something of so, it as long so as you've got these sort of awkward sounding names you know what people remember they them don't now. forget the name that's right, that's right. so it's maybe not a bad idea at all although some people at first went they should change that <laughs> uh, i've had a lot of people say that but it, the the sinus is constructed with mostly carbon fiber to keep it strong and light okay fuselage is entirely carbon fiber the wings and the landing gear are actually made of fiberglass. You want some flex in your wings. You need flex in the landing Carbon gear as well. Carbon is very stiff. Carbon is too stiff. So we get flex from the landing gear and the wings. And if you watch from the ground uh, and you pull a G and a half or two Gs, you see those the wings flex quite a bit. In fact, the testing at the factory takes them to 12 Gs before they failed. <laughs> and right? they snapped and they break catastrophically at 12 Gs. But they bend way up when long before they break. So yeah. and, okay. and the final composite that we use, we use Kevlar in the cockpit. If, oh, okay. Some people are doing this for safety purposes, but everything is gray inside the cockpit here. Ah, it that's is, all is Kevlar. Made for Kevlar. Okay. And uh, it really does protect the cockpit. We know about that. Yeah. Bulletproof vests and all exactly. the rest of it is to, for occupant safety. Okay. So what is the empty weight of the aircraft? Empty weight ranges from uh, under 700 pounds. Most of the ones we do here in the States with a parachute and everything else end up in that 750 to 770. It's still pretty light, pretty in, light. The, in the LSA class. Right. Well, uh, in 2000, late 2011, I ordered my second demonstrator, and I said, I, I've got to have one with removable wingtips. So they did it. And we probably sold 30 or 40 of them in the U.S. since then. And right? every single plane, we, every single sinus that we've sold has been sold with a removable wingtip. So we okay, call that so, the flex. So describe that for me now. Okay, the outboard portion of the wing has a spring-loaded bolt that goes up into the wing from tip the bottom? spar from okay. the bottom okay a little hex wrench seven turns of a hex wrench and it tightens it down okay okay there are some pins one pin anchors the outer side of the the uh, flapper on okay full, full span uh, okay. flapper on so that gives us support uh, there's and there's a, a spar extension that goes about two feet two and a half feet into the the wing itself okay it comes off in about 30 seconds so you turn it turn it around seven times uh, sometimes you click it from the top to make sure that it passes because it is spring-loaded. Ah, okay. Make sure it passes. You you have a hole in the top. Make of the sure it gets up into the seating very, hole. Very okay. small hole. You push down on it. Make sure it pulls out. And then the only thing you do. Most of them have wingtip lights, and those wingtip lights. Uh, You're gonna clip a little wire on. There, there is a little cannon plug with a with a. And you release that. So about 30 seconds to take a wing off. 30 seconds. Wow. Maybe 40 okay. seconds to put it on because you're lining it up a little bit. Okay. But when you get good at it, it's real, real quick. Really fast. Yeah. And that takes it, it's 50 feet when you have it's the, just under the 50 standard feet. wing. 49 feet, uh, 10 inches about. And okay. then it comes down to about 39 feet, 10 inches or 8 inches. Okay. So it will fit in any T-hanger that I've seen anyway. Since so they the, have a little finishing tip that goes on to cor it. Then. Correct. Because but again, then you can fly it with the 39 with or the, with almost 40 feet with of wingspan. 40 foot. And that's, that is the standard Virus. Uh, okay. okay. So we have three high wing, or actually four high wing models now. We have the Sinus, the Virus, the Alpha Trainer, and uh, the Virus SW. The Virus SW. Which, which is, has the which shortest is, wing. Which has a 35 foot wing. It's a relatively short wing. It still can be registered as a glider because it comes with with optional air brakes I recommend it to everybody the first customer I sold to he said he didn't want the air brake I didn't make him get it he's still mad at me for not <laughs> making him get the air brake it, it floats a lot it really is hard well, to land I can without prove the that so let's talk about that since we just mentioned it here I don't know if the camera can move a little bit with us here but this is what I'm pointing at up here is what we're talking about this has multiple names tell me what's going on uh, it there, can be a spoiler an air brake or a speed brake I've heard it called all things and I'm not even sure what's correct but what it does it kills a lift 
It uh, spoils. It spoil, the air. spoils the air coming over the and wing. You can see that's a, that's quite a bit of surface area, and it's at a at a very well determined location on the curvature of the wing, is it not? Right. And and what you do, it's inboard far enough where you still got control with the outboard portion ah, of the wing. Okay. You got plenty of flap run out beyond it, which is important, especially yeah. for landing when you get gusty wing. Yeah, full, full span. span flap there. I mean, that is right. about the longest flap in all of light sport aviation. Yeah. It, it, and uh, so what we get with that is, is a way to get down and kill the lift so that we don't get in ground effect and just float and float and float. I had a Air Force colonel who was a flight instructor in the Air Force, flew jets, and he bought a Virus uh, SW. And he didn't, he didn't think he wanted the, the air brakes. And I said, okay, we'll, we'll put the short tips on my Sinus and make it a Virus. Still a little longer than Virus SW. I said, try to land on the numbers. Well, uh, <laughs> we had a 5,000 foot runway. We were past the midpoint of the runway. He's, yeah, a, he's right. a good pilot. But and he was good, it, too. He huh? just floated and floated and floated. So he got a lesson there, didn't he? he well, he did. He wasn't, he wasn't through. He says, well, let me try one more time. <laughs> and he says, but uh, to make sure I'm at the right place, let me use the air brake and then lock it up and then land. Well, he, he made sure he was just over the numbers. And then he locked it up. And we still went over a thousand feet down the runway before he was able to get the wheels on the ground. So, so. this aircraft has uh, got some awards for its performance capabilities. Rand, tell me a little bit about that. If right, you we've got uh, a world record for around the world flight. We've also won the NASA Challenge with the Cenus, with the Virus SW, and also with <laughs> the uh, the G4, which is our special made glider. But we've won three three of the contests. They typically are out west, but it's sponsored by NASA. I think the last one was also sponsored by Google. And uh, essentially, they are challenges for the aviation community to come up with innovative ideas with light aircraft that give you efficiency, speed, handling characteristics, and quiet. And those are usually the criteria that they look at for this contest. And uh, the last one was the electric, 200 miles nonstop, able to carry four passengers and they averaged 400 passenger miles per gallon equivalent. <laughs> and they won uh, about a million point three uh, it was a for million that. dollar prize. It was a, yeah. over a million dollar that, prize. That million dollar prize. And plus not the, just a nice plaque on the wall. This was some right. serious money. For, especially for them. Uh, they celebrated the entire factory. All 100 people or so went out and did adventure training <laughs> as, as a reward for that. that cool, cool. Yeah. Very neat. So, okay, you won these NASA prizes. That's great. But tell me a little bit more about that around the world thing. Uh, Matish from uh, Slovenia flew two aircraft. He flew the Cenus and then he flew the Virus SW around the world. With the Virus SW, they put 300 liters of uh, fuel, that's about almost 100 gallons, in the aircraft. In fact, that aircraft is right over here at Tomi Aircraft oh, here in right? the land. Okay. Yeah. Right here uh, in the airport. We've got a, an American who bought it from Matish. And, but what he did, he decided to take the southern route, which nobody had ever done with a small aircraft. Right. And he flew across the Everybody south. goes around sort yeah. of at the equator, not yeah. at the equator, but sort of that, that kind of thing. And they do the northern He went the other way? He went from South America. He flew, first of all, across the, the Atlantic from uh, <laughs> North Africa all the way to, to, I believe, he landed in Brazil. Yeah. And then he left from uh, Chile and went, I think, one hop all the way to uh, Australia. Wow. So... He, uh, that is, a, I don't even know what the mileage yeah. is. It's got to be 8,000 miles or something, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, his whole, trip, his whole trip was just amazing. Uh, he had the turbocharged, the, the 914 okay. Rotex in. That was the first one ever built. Now they're, now they're offering it as an option. Okay. But, so he had uh, cruise speeds at altitude of 160 knots. Wow. And in, yeah, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty impressive Still aircraft. Still a lot of time in an airplane. He, but, he, uh, well, he, he had autopilot. Yeah, yeah, well, he'd need it. He'd need it. Okay, but, that's uh, great. All right, so well, let's go oh, fly ourselves he, now. Then. One, okay. one other thing, he, he actually flew over Mount Everest. Did he? And then? he published a book, and it's out there uh, above the Blue Planet, and it's it's a phenomenal photographic book of all the photos that he took. Wow, yeah. that's a, you know, you got to restate that again. Mount Everest is right at 29,000 feet. Most aircraft can't even get that high. No, not No matter close. what yeah. you do to them. Yeah, with the and turbo. To, and to just cruise right over it is really saying something. Yeah, he's got pictures looking down at Mount Everest. <laughs> he was he was probably a quarter mile from the summit, but uh, he was, a, he was looking down. a few airliners, and that's about yeah. it. So, All right, so that's some impressive flying, but let's bring it back here to Florida now. Rand, tell me a little bit about your operation. You're Pipistrelle USA. You're the U.S. representative for this company, and uh, you do more than just sell airplanes, correct? Uh, that, that's right, and, and I'm the representative for the southeast, and I have partners in Texas, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, up in, uh, in Kentucky, so I have some people who are doing demo flights uh, it's tough for people to get a demo flight and come all the way to Tampa. Yeah. But, uh, between San Antonio area and uh, 
uh, actually Tennessee makes it pretty easy for people to get you're covering for people demo. pretty yeah. well that so, way. Okay, yeah. and I'm a flight instructor and in fact all of my uh, partners are flight instructors as well. Okay. And uh, the the touring motor glider makes a great transition aircraft for airplane pilots to become glider pilots and for glider pilots to start flying airplanes. Kind of a uh, best of both worlds. Kind that, of thing. That's right. You got exactly. an airplane you can go places in. Yeah. You talked about a. Give me a couple of words about your flight to Oshkosh. Let's talk about that efficiency, and then we'll come back and talk about your operations some more. Right. Uh, I went up to the light sport repairman course that they held at Oshkosh, and when I flew back from that in my this business, is from in Florida my, now. No, okay. actually, I was starting uh, the the return trip. I had okay, a the return wind. trip. Yeah. Okay, so you're Oshkosh Could, back to Florida. Couldn't have done it with a headwind. Way. It was a long way, but right at 1,250 miles, the route I took, and uh, uh, I flew it in 10 hours at high. One nonstop. Uh, nonstop. 24 and a half <laughs> gallons of fuel. 24 gallons of fuel, yeah, 24 so. and a half gallons of fuel. I'm thinking, I'm thinking a Bonanza or something probably use 100 gallons to do that. I don't know. It wouldn't be an awful lot faster. Yeah. So that's pretty amazing. Anyway, 24 gallons, 1,250 miles, right? 10 hours of flying. Correct. And you didn't get out of the airplane all that time. I didn't. No, oh, you're I an didn't. impressive guy. <laughs> Gatorade. Gatorade is the key. Yes, right. Yeah, just recycle Gatorade. <laughs> yeah. No, don't use the yellow Gatorade. <laughs> at 12,000 feet, uh, hypoxia can do strange things to I'm you. I'm sure. So, yeah. That's where you were at. You were 12,000 feet for that. Most point? of the way, I was. Wow. At, I had good, good winds, tailwinds. I was at 12.5 or 11.5 most of the way. Yeah. So this is definitely a go places airplane. Absolutely. And yet it can also just go up and on a nice bubbly day when there's lift aloft, you just can go up and shut the motor down. Shut it down and have a great time. Yeah. And in fact, I did the Caribbean Air Rally with the Canadian group that flies. And I took my wife. Our first leg was from Fort Lauderdale Exec to Grand Turk. We did an economy cruise seven hours nonstop. You get your wife to go seven hours wow. nonstop? Yeah, Pretty good. Right. We could have stopped for fuel. We've got more way than one. We, there, so. we, 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 didn't, we could have stopped for fuel. We didn't need to. We actually beat a lot of the aircraft. Yeah, there. I'll yeah, bet. They were, yeah, because going down to stop for fuel really eats up the time. So good for you. That's fun. How many gallons does the airplane hold? 24 and a half gallons oh. usable. And, and again, we had 80 horsepower. 80 horsepower. So not the 100 horsepower. That means it. You can use other kinds of fuel. We'll touch on that in just a second, but it means that you, you, your burn rate on your flight, your long flight back. What did, what did you? Two point four gallons an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Think about that. That's that's pretty low. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, what kind of cruise speeds did you see? Uh, about uh, just under ninety knots. Okay. True airspeed. You're 100, 105 miles an hour yeah. then. Booked all the way back from Oshkosh. Pretty right. impressive. Okay. Well, finish up a little bit about uh, your your. If somebody says, "Well, I want one of these, but I'm just not sure." At the long wing, I don't know about that. I don't know about spoilers. Can you teach them all the stuff they need uh, to know? Absolutely. I'm a flight instructor, CFIG, and uh, I've had some transition st students come to me, and th within two or three hours, they're ready for a check ride. Is that some, right? Sometimes it takes longer. And again, the glider has some skill sets uh, that require a little more finesse than most airplanes, but it turns a pilot into a very proficient. Uh, pilot who really can handle the finesse that's required in a glider. Cool. Yeah. Well, you know what? I think we maybe ought to, uh, we'll wrap this video up and ask you for a web address, but I think we got to go do talk about actual flying of this airplane now. All right. Fantastic. All right. But so before we close, uh, give me the web address where we find out more. People are going to have questions, I am sure, out of all of this conversation. Where do they find you here on the web, Rand? Okay. They'll go to Pipistrol, uh, www.pipistrol-usa.com. Okay. Great. And you can find more about Pipistrel, a lot about Pipistrel. I've been to the factory there, a very impressive factory they have in Slovenia, with also a facility in Italy, which is very nearby, and uh, they, they use both facilities quite a bit. And uh, very impressive operation there. And uh, you can find lots more about that and all kinds of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Rand Vollmer and myself here at DeLand Showcase 2017.